Rollercom going 10-8. Now in this scenario, this is after the collapse. Societal breakdown has taken place. Uh, from this point on as well, it's going to be all theory. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. I mean, this could be totally wrong. You could take your cue from other communities like in Africa, uh, Argentina with a little bit of a financial collapse there and, and other places, Crete and, and Greece now. Uh, you don't hear much about them anymore, but, but you could take uh, a lesson from all those places, certainly Bosnia during, during that conflict, and apply it to, to your scenario. So what I'm going to cover in this scenario is using myself an ex as an example, my plan on getting home, utilizing the radio comm plan that I have set forth for myself to sort of uh, give me that edge or, or any edge that I could muster pretty much. This is an example of me bugging in back to my home where all my preps are and most importantly where my family is located. So that's going to be my goal number one. In this case here, you know, the, the, the old adage, uh, lead by example, uh, I, I really like following that example. Uh, also, I'm the kind of person that will not tell you to do something with if I'm not willing to do it myself. That's that's just me personally, and that's where I'm coming from. So, in this scenario here, I'm just going to show you my comp plan or my method of madness of what I'm going to implement uh, in my journey back home, and I have some challenges that that a lot of you face out there uh, one being budget physical obstacles of terrain uh, family members that are not old enough to get a ham license or are not willing to get a license uh, real world challenges that we all face in one form or another and I have a lot of them so I take the opportunity here to kind of show you how I deal with those to, to overcome those challenges. So what you're going to see here is pretty much the Gorilla Com Com plan and the map in front of you is is somewhat of a correct representation of my terrain uh, the type of terrain that's I'm located in and some of the challenges that I have to deal with. So this here is honest to goodness real life that I'm facing. This is a snapshot of my scenario nothing fake here nothing is made up this is what's going on in my neck of the woods concerning myself as far as a prepper group or anything like that no it's just me and my family me my wife and my two little girls my wife is a stay-home mom with my two kids so our house is located in the foothills area right here this is my house I have a 3,000 foot ridge right here a little gap between the ridge and this mountain. This mountain is 4,500 feet high. Major radio site. This radio that's up here is an agency radio. Solar power. And another gap here and there's a major route that goes from the valley floor here which is uh, 200 feet above sea level and makes its way up to the foothills and that's my route going home. I have another route over this way that comes around the back end as well. So I have two major routes to go home. And then between these little gaps here, I have little country roads as well that makes it to my location there. But it's faster for me to make, use the major routes. Okay. Uh, and there's another ridge line there. This big old rock here with the radio on top is where I place my simplex portable repeater solar power simplex portable repeater and I'll link the video showing uh, that particular setup it's in play it's deployed it's being used it's a prototype and I have a degraded battery on it but later on it's going to be upgraded uh, with more capabilities. This radio here is another agency radio. I won't just pick an agency. Uh, VHF radio, solar power in, in a mountaintop that's only helicopter accessible. You might 
be able to hike up there, but it's very, uh, very rough terrain there. It's only helicopter access up there. This Lego house here is another prepper that's like-minded that I've made friends with. We went out camping, shooting, and all that good stuff there. You know who you are, guy. His house is located down in the valley here. This little band around here he's got two VHF HTs and that's the range of those two handy talkies five miles in flatlands here this bar here is a major hot freeway presently that's me in that toy car there there's a little band around there that's an HT range five miles the bigger band around the, the vehicle is the radio inside the vehicle effective range would be possibly 15 miles, 15 to 20 miles on UHF. Effective range with a handy talkie that I have located with me in my get home bag and all that, five miles, flat land. This big rope around this area here, it goes around this way and back on that way, is the maximum range of my portable repeater on this mountain that's 5300 feet high this is all true this is not made up and it's verified this location here is 80 miles straight line to shot to this mountain here and that's that's the range I have that's the maximum effective range coming from the north coming from the west right here in this point here there's a major crossroads here that is 80 miles sorry maximum range this location here is verified at 45 I haven't made it down south yet to see if I have any more range but here in this major city that's located right here 45 miles away from my repeater here a 5 watt handy talkie solar power simplex repeater now you see this paracord here around the mountain inside on the other side of the ridge here that is my effective range of this simplex repeater so yeah I may boast and, and prove and show that I have 80 mile maximum range over on this side in the outskirts of, of my range here but like I said that's my maximum range it's kind of like firearms and rifles. This may be the maximum range of your M16 or M4 these days. But the effective range is much less. What is it? 500 meters, 300 meters for a, a 223 rifle? Don't quote me on that. For this repeater here, my effective range is 7 miles. My house is 7 miles away from this particular uh, repeater seven miles radius from this hilltop I have solid communications where you will experience full quieting full quieting means if you transmit and you're listening on the other side it, it's it's quiet the radio is quiet meaning yeah you're receiving something but if you don't talk it's clear crystal clear whereas if you go down the maximum range out here 80 miles away you're going to hear a little bit of static, a little bit of sizzling bacon. So that's something to look out for when, when, you know, when people boast around, oh, I got 23 miles from this radio from here to there. Oh, okay, fine and dandy, but what's going to happen when you go behind a building? You're going to lose your signal. Around this area here, I will not lose my signal. I would have positive comms, seven miles radius from this mountain. So in my situation, I work the field a lot. I'm usually on the road constantly and this whole area here is my area. Pretty much halfway between this mountain and this mountain here where my sword is going around is my service area. I'm all over this place here. So I'm constantly on the road. So, But most of the time I'm down in the valley here most of the time I would say 65 percent of the time so my challenge was how can I communicate with my wife from the valley floor she couldn't do it direct because I got this 3,000 foot 
bridge in the way. I couldn't get to her and she couldn't get to me using a radio. So I had to come up with, with another solution to negotiate this hill. The simplex repeater on the GMRS radio service was placed on this 5,300 foot mountain right over here. So you see this little rope here. I have a directional antenna pointing in, uh, in my house pointing to the uh, simplex repeater. So she could call me from here. It'll go straight to the simplex repeater and from the simplex repeater will be repeated out and she could reach me in the valley here and vice versa. Why am I using a directional antenna? They're called Yagi antennas and I'll post a picture right now. It's directional. With a little bit of power, let's say a 3 dB antenna, Yagi, Yagi antenna, which is a small little thing for the UHF band. If I put 5 watts of power in that antenna, it, the radio up here is going to feel like it's transmitting 10 watts. So this is going to feel 10 watts coming out of this radio here. So it's going to put maximum power direct directed towards the simplex repeater. It's Why am I using a UHF band? To comply with the federal laws in place before the collapse. And while the collapse is happening, I don't have time to go up to this mountain here to change frequency. Theoretically, that frequency is still going to remain in play. The GMRS uh, radio frequency and I, I, I have the license for that so it's perfectly legal for me to do that so at this point you know I, I can't go up there and change it later on in my upgrades uh, a year from now or so I will be able to remotely control this radio to change frequency and of course I'm going to document it so you guys will see that way later down the road but for now this is the reality that that we have now so right now I'm coming home I'm 80 miles away here and once I reach this certain town which indicates my outer limits of of my uh, range I give home a call through the repeater here just a quick message saying hey I'm 80, I'm 80 away quick and simple and done I'm gonna hear that repeated from from the repeater here to myself again because I'm gonna transmit and it's gonna repeat it back out to the world a few seconds later it records it and then sends it right back out then hopefully my wife will receive that message because she'll have it on the speakers all over the house and respond when I get that positive response back everything is cool your morale is totally uplifted at least for me if I don't get a response from her at that location I would transmit a, a sequence of tones which will let me record a message into a mailbox slot on the uh, simplex repeater and I'll leave a message there so she could retrieve it later on to see if anybody has uh, uh, left a message or not and I will do so the same I would punch the codes to retrieve messages from the simplex repeater because it could store your recorded message uh, from afar remotely and then I would interrogate the, the answering machine to see if there's any messages that she left for me some time ago or whatever. So it goes both ways. This simplex repeater is capable of having, I think, nine mailboxes or message uh, or announcements. They call it announcements, but it's kind of like a, a, a separate slot to put in a recorded message. It's, it's got a mailbox as well, but it's only for one user. I plan to use this uh, simplex repeater and share it with like-minded individual like uh, the family here uh, in, in this town over here. So they will have their own individual mailbox as well to retrieve and, and, and give and retrieve messages. In turn, he might hear me try to get a hold of my wife here and he could respond and say, hey, how things are doing? things over in my area is doing bad or give me warnings I'll give him warnings uh, if I'm if I make it home you know we'll just exchange information using this as a command repeater between uh, the both of us me up here in the foothills 
him down there. Don't know what his plan is, but I think he's heading up towards the hills as well. But that is part of our comp plan. And from outside my family, we got another family here that's also utilizing the system here. Uh, they don't have the HT to make this uh, this system going yet for for them, but because I'm in the testing phase. But if this thing should happen now, it would just be me and my wife.